In this session, we're going to talk about Chapter 6. It deals with continuous random variables. The previous chapter dealt with uh, discrete uh, random variables using the binomial and the Poisson distributions. This one is going to use another couple of uh, distributions, the uniform distribution, and then the uh, normal, uh, the Gaussian, uh, probability distribution. Uh, the base material for this is about 15 minutes long. Uh, I suspect that I'll have more than five minutes worth of additional comments to this. And so this will probably be at least three sessions. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Probability distribution. And you're going to hear this throughout statistics. Uh, the normal probability distribution is the same bell-shaped curve um, that we've seen before. It deals with continuous variables, uh, continuous random variables, whereas the ones in Chapter 5 were dealing with unique events with discrete variables. Um, you flip the coin and it's either heads or it tails. With um, the continuous random variables, you could have a height. Uh, you have a height of five foot eleven, but actually, probably very very few people actually have a height of exactly five foot eleven. It may be five foot eleven point one or five foot eleven point one eight seven or something like that. But we round it to to that number. But the continuous variable has got the ability to have an infinite number of values between two points. Uh, there's an infinite number of values between one and two. Uh, there's an infinite number of values between one and one and a half. Uh, so it's a, uh, that's just one of the concepts that we deal with, but that's continuous random variables. So um, we're going to, uh, to talk about that a little bit and uh, the normal probability uh, distribution that we have. Again, <clears throat> just as sort of a form of review, there's a uh, picture of the, a uniform distribution. And um, then what we're talking about as far as a normal this is going to be the bell-shaped curve. This is particular one on the, the height of, um, of individuals. Um, these, some points, these actually never do really touch down here uh, in theory in this point. Uh, but you can see that the mean somewhere is a 6, 8, or a 68 inches. Um, and then you have uh, fewer and fewer on the on the tails. Uh, the, the ends, this is the, the right tail and this of course would be the, the left tail uh, on that distribution. So let's just look at a couple of these. Um, which of these measurements uh, would probably result in a normal bell-shaped distribution? Uh, a plot of the measurement of the wing lengths of chickens. Again, that would probably be a bell-shaped curve. A plot of 50 rolls of a die. So <clears throat> we roll the die 50 times, we're going to expect to get one-sixth of those. Uh, whatever 50 over 6 is would be a 1. We get, expect to get 50 over 6 twos and 50 over 6 Three. So on that particular one, we would expect to get a uniform distribution uh, that starts at the value 1 and goes up to, to 6. The plot of the prices of houses. Well, uh, most of the time what you'd expect there on the plot of the prices of houses is you'd expect a lot of houses in the lower end of the scale and then you've got this one guy out here that's selling a house for like $10 million or something like that. 
So that's going to be a skewed distribution. Uh, a plot of the heights of fourth grade children. And again, that would probably be a, a normal one. <clears throat> uh, I have one for you. <clears throat> what would you expect to be the weights, <clears throat> a plot of the weights of pennies? The, the, a plot of the weights of pennies. Well, to answer that question, you need to know that in 1982, they changed pennies. Before 1982, they were made out of copper. After that, it was a copper and zinc combination. <clears throat> so if you were to go through and get a bunch of pennies and weigh them, you'll find that there's going to be one distribution for those that were minted after 1982, and then there'll be another distribution, a little bit heavier, for those that are uh, before 1982. And so it's actually going to be a, a bimodal uh, distribution there. It'll have, a, you know, two peaks on it. <clears throat> this is a math term, the point of inflection. The first point of inflection actually occurs at the first standard deviation. So the mean minus one standard deviation is at that first point of inflection. The mean minus plus the one standard deviation is at that first inflection, point of inflection. And from some previous work, we know that there's expected to be 68% of the values are between the mean plus or minus. The mean uh, plus or minus two standard deviations we expect 95% and then three standard deviations, 97.5%. Okay, I'm going to stop this video at this time and then we'll pick up and uh, do the, the second part of the standard normal uh, in just a minute.